Hi, my name is Janet Fagan. Today we are going to sketch portraits. I'm going to be using myself as a model. I'm sitting here in front of a, a large mirror. You could possibly replicate this at home if you like by going into your bathroom, um, using your bathroom mirror, maybe uh, sitting in front of that with a light. If you happen to have something like this, a clamp light, or perhaps a lamp, that you could set up beside you. Um, because what makes it easier to see the form of the face is having a direct light shining from, ideally, a, a little bit above you and to the side. The other materials that we have are paper. You can use paper out of your um, printer if you like. I wouldn't go any smaller than eight and a half by 11. Uh, you'll see here, I just have a couple of white sheets of sketchbook paper. I'm just gonna put this out of the way. Um, number two, pencil would work fine. I also have a couple of drawing pencils here. Um, if you have an eraser, that comes in handy. Uh, I have a pink eraser, or you can use um, one of these good old white ones. Um, pencil sharpener, you might want to have one of those. And if you um, don't want to go into your bathroom to draw, you could also use a hand mirror. So maybe a, a small mirror like this, or even a makeup mirror propped up on a stack of books would work. So just some sort of uh, mirror that you can look into to get a glimpse of yourself and uh, pencil, paper, and erasers, and we're ready to go. So I am also gonna use a drawing board today because I like to work at a little bit of an angle. It actually helps me to see what I'm doing um, a little bit more clearly. And what we're gonna talk about today are the tools that artists use to help them to find their way when they're navigating a portrait. Um, a face is a, a super fun thing to draw. Um, you always have a model, so you can always use yourself as a model, which is great, but this works for friends and family members too. So if you just have somebody that's sitting still for a little while, maybe they're taking a nap, maybe they're watching television, um, there's your model. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and the first thing I'm gonna show you is just how to, how to get started, how to set up your, your portrait so that you know where things go. Um, I'm gonna grab my pencil here and I'm gonna have my eraser ready. So the first, the first step is really just to think about the whole shape of your head, not just your face, right? So the whole shape of your head. So on my paper, I'm just gonna very loosely make a big oval. And you're gonna notice when I'm drawing that I'm gonna be very loose, very sketchy. I'm using my whole arm and I'm really not worrying if things are perfect because one of the things that I really enjoy about drawing um, faces or portraits is that everybody is different. So you spend a lot of time looking and observing and making adjustments. The first thing I'm gonna show you is actually called a proportion map. And it's a guideline that gives you a general starting point for um, how to put the features on the face. But like I said, everybody's different. So this proportion map, even though it's a general starting place, uh, you're gonna find the more you observe and the more people that you draw, that we all fall in and out of these guidelines. Um, so the first, the first line for the map um, is really just a center line. And because I'm looking at myself head on in the mirror, that center line is gonna fall right down the middle of my face. So I'm gonna do that. And before I go much further, I'm also gonna put in a cylinder on my neck and a really simple horizontal line just to signify where my shoulders um, fall. So I have my, my vertical center line. The next line that I'm going to make is a halfway horizontal line. The halfway line for um, our heads is basically right through the center of the eyes. So I'm going to make a halfway mark to signify that. And then I'm going to make another halfway mark between the top of my eyebrow and my chin. That line is right here. It's right beneath my nose. So another halfway mark there, halfway between the top of the eyes and the chin. And the next map line that I'm going to draw is gonna tell me where my mouth falls on my face. So again, halfway, 
halfway between the bottom of my nose and the bottom of my chin. So one more halfway mark. All right, so we have a pretty good start now. Um, so you might notice when you look at this, oh, you know, this looks kind of funny, <clears throat> excuse me. The, the eyes look low. A lot of people say that when they're first learning how to draw with a proportion map. And the eyes do look low until you put your hairline in. Because when you think about the whole shape of your head, the ball of your head is actually the highest point and your hairline is below that. So once you put a rough um, mark in for where your hairline is going to go, which is about a third of the way between your eye line and the crown of your head, then it's gonna to start to make more sense. So what else do we know that can help us to map out the face? Well, we know that in general, um, the width of the face is approximately five eyeballs. So I'm just gonna take off my glasses so that you can see my eyeballs. Um, so if you think about this, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna measure it here. And I'm gonna also have, I'm gonna teach you a little trick. So when you want to measure something that's not right here on you, something that you're looking at, you can use your pencil as a measuring tool. If you keep a straight arm, and think about the tip of your pencil as one end of your measurement and your thumb as the, as the bottom of your measurement, I'm gonna measure my eye and I'm gonna close one eye so that I can see. I'm gonna put the eraser in the corner of my eye and I'm gonna put my thumb in the other corner. So I've got a measurement and now I'm just gonna check. I'm gonna see, is my face really five eyes wide? One, two, three, four, five. All right, so what I just learned by doing that is my face is a little bit narrower than that guideline, but I can use that information in just a couple of minutes. For now, I'm just gonna lightly sketch in five eyes. One, two, three, four, five. Keeping in mind that my particular face isn't quite that wide. The next thing I'm gonna look for is where is my nose gonna, gonna fit into all this? The other thing that we know in general is that the sides of our noses line up with the inside corners of our eyes. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna drop a dotted line down so that I have a general idea about how wide my nose is going to be. Because I already know from my proportion map that the bottom of my nose is going to rest on that line. So I'm gonna look at my nose and I'm gonna try and figure out, okay, what am I seeing? I'm, when you ask yourself what you're seeing, a follow-up question to that is what are the big shapes? And for your nose, we all have this cartilage on the tip, the ball of our nose, and I start with that. So for me, for my face, I have a pretty, pretty big ball of cartilage right there, so I'm gonna sketch that in. And then I'm gonna look for the shape of the outside of my nostrils on either side of that ball. Kind of a triangular shape. And then how does that fall into the, the sides or the bridge of my nose? Okay, so just a really general sketch for the shape of my nose. Moving down to the mouth, um, the proportion line that we have underneath the nose is approximately the, uh, where the bottom of the lip rests, but I'm just gonna double check that on my face. So I can use uh, measuring again to figure this out, okay? So I'm gonna look for where is the halfway point between the bottom of the nose and my chin on me? So I'm gonna take my pencil, Straight arm again, no bend in the elbow. Tip of the eraser is at the bottom of my nose and my thumb is on the chin. Okay, so that's how far it is from the bottom of my nose to my chin. Now I'm gonna take that same measurement without moving my thumb and I'm gonna cross check it against the bottom of my nose to my eyebrow. And it's about, it's about the same. So double checking that. So there's the bottom of my chin. 
And then I want to see where my mouth, where the bottom of my lip, bottom of my bottom lip, closing my mouth to check that measurement. So the tip of the eraser is under the bottom of my lip. The thumb is the bottom of my chin. And now I'm going to see where that space is in relation to the, the measurement I just took. So I'm going to move it up and check it from the bottom of my lip to the bottom of my nose. It's about the same. So, so I'm, I'm lining up pretty, pretty much with the proportion map. So I'm going to sketch in the general mouth shape without spending too much, too much fuss there because I want to put in one more proportion map line. The other thing that I know is that the corner of our mouths typically line up with the center of our eyeballs. So I'm going to drop a dotted line down from the center of the eyes to the corner of the mouth. And um, that's going to line up all of the features according to the proportion map with a little bit of double checking that I did with some measuring. The other thing that the proportion map tells us is where the ears fall. And I'm just going to move my hair back so you can see my ear right here. And the top of the ear and the bottom of the ear fall between the eyes and the nose. So I'm just going to put that in on both sides. And now is the fun part. So this is the general idea for the sketch of a face. You already have one um, tool in your toolkit. You know that you can measure to figure out if your measurements in your face actually fit the proportion map or if they vary. We know from the beginning that my face is a little bit narrower than the five eyes across. So we're starting to get all this information. And we have one more tool that you can use. And that is, um, you can take your pencil again and you can check angles in your face. And this is another way that you can tell what you actually look like on paper um, and how it, you might need to make small adjustments to make it look a little bit more like you. So again, I'm gonna use a straight arm without bending my elbow and I'm gonna line up the angle of my pencil between key points on my face. So what I'm looking at right now is this, this line between my eye the corner of my, the outside edge of my eye and my nose. Um, so when I line that up in the mirror, I get this. And then I'm gonna, without moving my pencil, I'm gonna move it down to my page. And what that just told me is that I need to make a little adjustment. My eye is a little bit wider out than I originally had it. I'm just double checking it. And so when you start looking at the eyes, this is another really fun place to spend some time. So you'll notice that there's the line of the eyebrow, and then there may or may not be an inner lid line that you can see. Then there's your lash line, and then there's the bottom of your eye. So all of these landmarks, what I like to do is ask myself, where are the highest points of each of those? So when I look at my eyebrow, the highest point is on the inside. So I'm gonna start with that, and I'm just gonna make a sloped line. And then I'm gonna go to the next line. I have a pretty distinct fold right here for my, um, the inside of my um, eyelid. And it, the highest point there is a little bit to the left of the center line of my eye, and I'm going to find that on my paper and drop it down. My eyelid line, my top eyelid, underneath the line of my eyelid fold, there's a triangular space that I can see in between those two lines, and I'm going to try and capture that. So this is the triangle that I'm looking at there. So from, from here on out, it's like a puzzle. 
you're asking yourself about the relationships of all of the different landmarks in your face. How do the different lines that we see relate to each other? Where are the high points? Where are the low points? What do the spaces look like between those lines? And you're just gonna keep moving all around your face, asking those same questions, and then checking yourself with angles and with measurements. So let's take a few minutes just to draw. I'm gonna work on my portrait. You can work on yours, and then we'll come back together and see how our progress is going. So you'll see I've gotten a little bit further on my sketch and I'm starting to look for um, some big dark areas of where the shadows are falling. So if you wanna go ahead and start um, adding some shading, the way to do that is just look for your darkest darks first. And where I see those are along my, along my hairline, um, on the inside of my, of my neck here, my eyes, my nostrils, and I'm going to start um, just blocking those in just with some hatch lines, just some parallel lines with my pencil, just to move really quick because this is, this is just a sketch. This is just a fun way to explore the face. After I'm, I'm pretty happy that I have um, a reference for the darkest parts of my face, I'm going to start looking for the middle tones. And so the next areas of, of shadow, I see that I have, and this is where your light comes in handy because you can really start to see some wonderful patterns. So I see in my eye socket, there's a shape that's mostly shaded. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a lighter hatch area there for my other eye socket as well. For the left-hand side of my face and moving down into my neck and across my chest. So you can start to see the advantage of having a spotlight is that you can see where the light tones and the dark tones define the form. And the more that you can observe and play with the way that these shadows define the face, the more that comfortable that you'll start to become sketching portraits and playing with these new tools. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an example that I did at home. If you don't wanna look at somebody head on, you can ask them to turn a little bit or you can even do this with yourself. But here's an example of a three quarter view. This is my friend James. Um, and you can see that he wasn't looking directly at me. He's looking off to the side a little bit like so or like so. And I really like this view because you can see the, the line of the nose. So you'll see that um, this line on his face. I think it's really fun to sort of capture that um, it's not quite a profile, a three quarter view where you can still see the edge of the nose as the head turns away from you. But the way that changes your proportion map. So remember we started the proportion map with a big oval and a cylinder for the neck. Well, in a three quarter view, the, everything changes just slightly. So the neck isn't lined up um, symmetrically with the head any longer. But what happens is the center line, as you turn your head, the center line turns as well. So you can imagine it just wrapping around the A and then all of your, all of your landmarks are gonna wrap around with it. And then as you look at your neck, you're gonna notice that the, the back of your head flows into the neck and the front of the neck, what shows is just a little bit shorter. 
So you're going to have your same cylinder, but it's just going to have a little bit of a different, a different look because the head is turned. And you're going to see the jawline from the side as well. So just a couple of tips to get you um, exploring from a, a, a three-quarter view. Remember that first proportion line is just going to wrap around the face. Okay. So everything on the far side of that line is smaller than everything that's closer to you. All right, so just a few tools and tricks. I hope you have fun exploring with these. Um, the more you practice, just like any new tool, the more comfortable you'll get. And uh, just draw all you can, keep looking, keep observing, and have, have fun. Thank you.